tuning in once again. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. When you subscribe, hit that notification bell. So every time I drop a video, you will be the first to no be notified. Hey, I want to get into a story. This story is about a month old. I've been sitting on this story too. I was kind of debating if I wanted to do it or not due to the actually the age of the victim. But I think I could put it all in context <clears throat> if you just give me a moment. This day's girl allegedly shot by mistake by merchant while waiting to have picture taken with my Easter bunny says she'll quote, never forgive him. Let's get into the video and then we'll go through the article. The high desert deputies say they found the man who fired his gun at a crowded shopping mall and wounded a little girl waiting to see the Easter bunny. CBS 2's Nicole Comstock spoke to the suspect's business partner about that shooting. As police work on extraditing Markel Cockrell back to San Bernardino County, where he's accused of shooting a nine-year-old girl named Ava inside the Mall of Victor Valley. His business partner is expressing her heartfelt sorrow over what happened to the resilient little girl, who kept a smile on her face, even during her ambulance ride to the hospital. It broke me. That's what touched me. So that, when I seen that little girl smile, I knew I had to do the right thing. Amarani Sanchez says the right thing for her to do now is permanently shut down her shoe store, Soul Addicts, and offer help to Ava and her family. I, I just thank God. Ava's grandma tells us the nine-year-old's shattered arm should heal on its own. I'm glad they caught him, and he will definitely pay for this. I don't care about the shop. That little girl, she's in my prayers. But truth be told, the resale sneaker shop was Sanchez's dream. And the 21-year-old tells us she now realizes she made a big mistake by bringing Cockrell on as her business partner. This was my dream, you know, and for someone who didn't have the right mindset as me to just take it away, it really hurts. Police say Cockerell was chasing shoplifters out of the store Tuesday night when he started firing a gun inside the crowded mall, and he hit Ava instead. At the time, she was standing in line to take a photo with the Easter Bunny. His shirts got stolen, and he just overreacted. Sanchez says her store has been targeted by thieves before, and that she handled it the professional way when she purchased theft insurance. So we knew it was going to come. I just don't know what was going through his head to even pull it out when it could have been solved so differently. The suspect is now facing attempted murder charges and the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department tells us they are also looking for those shoplifting suspects. Reporting. So as you see, it's a lot to be uncovered with this video. Let's get into the article. Said so this uh, Southern California shoe store owner accused of shooting a wounded a nine-year-old girl when he opened fire at, shop at shoplifters. Agreed Thursday to be turned to turn from Nevada to face charges in the case. The girl says she'll never forgive him. Quote unquote. Police have said that Markel Cockrell, 20, fled from the California desert city of Victorville in his car just after the girl, identified by family members as Eva Kruniak. Was, mistaken, was mistakenly hit by bullets on Tuesday as she waited to have a picture taken with a mall Easter bunny. Uh, points I want to make about this article. One, so the girl says she will, quote, never forgive him. And like I said, this is one reason why I kind of hesitated about doing the story because I knew people who saw this video were probably going to say, hey, she's only nine years old. She's still a kid. She's probably mad. Of course she's mad. She's mad because she didn't get to see the Easter Bunny for one reason. I mean, yeah, she got shot. And that's another thing. This brother couldn't hit the shoplifters, but you actually hit a small, well, I don't know how small she is, but a nine-year-old child three times. How in the hell did you not hit nobody else? Did not hit anybody running, but you was able to hit one person standing still three times. It twice an arm, and I can't remember what other, other bullet hit. 
I'm amazed by his precision, yet lack of precision. Oh, man, I don't know there's so many places you can go with that part. But anyway, back to the little girl. Uh, yeah, she's mad because she got shot. She's probably also mad because she didn't get a chance to get a picture with the Easter Bunny. But what I want to say is, nine-year-old, nine years old or not, this young lady is on code. Matter of fact, if you watch this video, what I see is everyone in this story that's involved in this story is on code to go against the brother. Yes, the brother screwed up. Yes, the brother needs to go to jail for what he did. You know, oh, needs to be punished for what he did. Whatever the punishment may, whatever the law says, the punishment has to be. I mean, because you're living in a country that you don't control, that you're not in charge of. So you are bound by their laws. So he, like I say, so he should, like I say, face a punishment. But like I was saying, everybody in the story is on code. The little girl says she's not going to forgive him ever. Yes, she's only nine. But the thing is, nine-year-olds are taught. You understand? The kids are taught to think a certain way. And then they grow into becoming the people that they grow to become. So when you have people out here who are like white supremacists, I'm not saying she is. She got people out here who are hateful, who got hatred toward people, evil, maybe criminals. I don't know. You might got people that may be not criminals, you know, good people, whatever the case may be. But people are taught growing up how they are to think and how they are to act in the world. So just saying that she's nine years old, so you can't really, you know, take it seriously or, you know, you know, really can't go with that. Well, that's part of the article. They, they put that in the article. They put that as the title of the article, not me. So basically, I think what they're trying to do is sway the jury. If you really want to, you know, hear my take on it. I think they're trying to sway the jury to be more sympathetic toward her and be like, I'm not going to forgive him. The jury go like, hell, we're not going to forgive him because you shot a little kid three times. This shit hit nobody else. Again, we, I'm not going to get back on that. But yeah. So no, she, that little girl is on code. The grandmother is on code saying her granddaughter's a warrior and that, and that guy, oh yeah, he's going to, he's going to pay for this. He's going to, you know, she said it outright. He is going to pay for this. Unlike our people who says, we just hope that, you know, someone does something to us. We know the law will take care of it. And we'll forgive people who do stuff against us. For instance, y'all remember this story? Both of John's brother, you remember his brother? Got up there on the stand. Let's scroll down. Hell, where is this set? And said to Amber Geiger, who Geiger, whatever the hell her name is, when she, you know, she killed his brother, quote unquote, uh, mistakenly thought she was in her own apartment and dude was sitting down eating cereals. And she just opened, just, you know, pulled a gun out, just shot at him, shot him and killed him. This young dude said, I forgive you. Give your life to Christ. A few minutes after the sentence, this is after she got sentenced to however many years. A few minutes after the sentence was handed out, the victim's brother, 18-year-old Brant John, brother, stepped to the witness stand to deliver a victim impact statement. He said, I love you as a person, and I don't wish anything bad on you. If you truly are sorry, I know I can speak for myself. I forgive you. And I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. You know, I look at this and I say, truth be told, this young brother actually... As much as I do not want to hear this and get upset with how quickly we forgive other people when they do something to us, or how quickly you just forgive anybody that do something against your family just so easy. I know biblically you're supposed to do that. Matter of fact, the Bible says if if a person who does you wrong asks for repents and asks asks for forgiveness, then you should forgive them. And that's pretty much is what is in his statement. He said, I love you as a person. I don't wish anything bad on That's I, that, that part I, I'm not really agreeing with. But because, I mean, you got to be punished. You can forgive somebody, but still got to be punished. If you truly are sorry, I know I can speak for myself. I forgive you. Like I say, that's 
That's that, 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 that really is a biblical principle. You understand know what I'm saying? But you remember this story. This guy right here. Citizen trial, right thing, thing, no remorse. The Bible says, you know, if somebody doesn't ask for remorse or has no forgiveness, then you really don't have you don't have to forgive them. But this Rev said, Reverend Simmons' son, I mean, Dan, uh, Dan Simmons Jr. said to Ruth, I forgive you. I know that you don't understand that, but God requires me to forgive you. No, he don't. No, he don't. Not the guy says, I hate all you. I think we can all figure it out. But as I was saying, as long as you in a country that you do not control, the land is not your land. I don't, you know, a lot of us believe that we was here before they were here. That's fine. But they control it now. No matter what you say about what happened in the past, 400 years ago, 100 years, no, three, 400 years ago, how we was here first, and this is our land, even how the census, uh, how they, described us in the census two, two, three hundred years ago and how it changed 150 years ago, what have you. The point is, these people are in control now. And my take on it is, as long as you're in a country that you have no control over, we all have to stay on code. Shout out to Brother Neela Fuller. I would re highly recommend you go and get his book and read his book about the compensatory, I can't say the name, such a long title, but I got the book myself by halfway through it. But compensatory code, pretty much telling you how to survive in this system that we live in. But the point is, like I said, you have to stay on code on everything. So when it comes to stuff like this, as a people know, we don't forget them people because we don't know what the motives is behind what they do. Like with Dylan Roof, we saw what his motive was. Uh, there was a shooting today in Buffalo, New York. We saw what that dude's uh, motive was. Can't forgive these people because they were born and raised and raised to, I guess, since they were children. They just wake up one day and say, I hate white people. Don't go don't go watching, uh, what's that movie called, Higher Learning, and believe that's true. No. Uh, Remy, that dude, in real life, Remy had been thinking that way his whole life. Because ain't no way in the world somebody gonna teach you in two weeks to be a you know a white supremacist or whatever the heck it may be. Once a semester you go from being a boy who loves everybody to just hating you know black people and everybody but you. But you, it just don't happen that way. Uh, people can sway you the way you think, but in the end, being that drastic and dramatic, uh, it's not real life. But anyway, like I said, the girl says she would never forgive him. Like I said, this is talk as they're growing up. So when she becomes 21, 31, she'll say the same thing, that she'll never forgive them. Then what you gonna say? But like I said, she's on code, the grandmother on code, the lady who's doing the story is on code. Matter of fact, the Hispanic lady who owns the store is on code. 
them too. Everybody's on code against a brother who, again, like I say, commit a heinous crime and he should, I mean, he's going to be punished. And I mean, like I say, rightfully so, because like I say, you're in the country that you can't control the law. So you get what you get. We all get what we get. Unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? Whether, whether, whether it's deserving or whether it's fair or not, until we can change the narrative, you got to understand it is what it is. So now it's time for us to do something to change it. But again, like I say, even the reporters on code, the lady who owns the store is on code. Because I'm going to tell you like this here. Truth be told, this heifer no, knew what she was hiring this guy for. She said the store had been hit a few times. But she went and got insurance. But regardless, I guarantee she had been tired of people. She probably, of people coming in and robbing her store. And it's probably some of us. And so she felt she going to get this brother that got tattoos let me see. This brother right here, they got tattoos down his neck. I mean, I, I mean, and this the picture. He look, I don't know, he look kind of goofy, but I mean, he got tattoos going down his neck. Let's go back to it. And she might have thought he was probably a gangster, game bang. Well, he had a gun, so I mean, it's not. I get. I'm sure she knew he had a gun, and it's probably why she put him on the stab and said, you know, I'll make your business partner because he said, you know. She felt that he was going to protect the store. I don't care if you got insurance or not. I got insurance on my home. Okay, let's be for real. I got insurance on my house. I got insurance on my vehicle. If someone breaks into my house and steals something, best believe I have every intention of making sure that that person does not go outside of my house the same way they came in if I, got, if I can help it. If someone tries to break into my truck, tries to steal it or attempts to steal a catalytic conversion, which is just like, you know, a big thing that's being taken nowadays. Again, I'm going to do everything I can best believe to make sure that they do not get away from my truck, get out of my truck or from under my truck, the same in the same condition that they got to my truck. And I have insurance on both of these possessions. It's not about the insurance. It's about the feeling that somebody feels that they can just come in and rob for you, from you, insurance or not. We're going to make sure that it don't happen again. You're going to think twice about coming up in the store. And that's what he was there for, for security, for, for protection. Forget the narrative that she's trying to put out there. That's what he was there for. Now she's going to act like, oh, I don't know why he pulled, pulled the gun now. That was very unprofessional. You know, I don't know what was going through his head. You know, doggone well was going through his head. That's why he was there. But anyway, like I was saying, that's that's pretty much all I got for this story. Like I said, we got to stay on code just like them. That's what they do. They said everybody's on code against us. So we have to be on code against everybody else. We got to stop committing crimes. We got to stop trying to be the savior for them people, for everybody else. We got to be on code for ourselves. We got to try to look out for our own community. I mean, shoot, I was taught a long time ago when I worked at Walmart, somebody steals something around the store, you let them go. And them people ain't going to, Walmart ain't going to pay your funeral, ain't going to pay for your family's expenses for the next 10 years if you go chasing a dude because he stole a belt and he turned around and stabbed and shoot you and kill you in the middle of the parking lot. Just ain't going to happen. You understand what I'm saying? So... Brother, you gotta be more brothers, we gotta be more smarter than that. You gotta be a whole lot smarter than this. But anyway, like I said, thank y'all for joining. Uh be sure to like the video, comment, put your comments down below, and then share it with the world. And with that being said, I leave you in peace. And I see you on the other side.